Hey everyone, this is Mitch here with another Logic tutorial. This tutorial is going to be over mixing, and this has been a long time coming. I've really, really, really wanted to begin a mixing tutorial out there just because there's so much confusion in this subject, and there's so much to talk about in the subject that I'm going to split this up into two videos. In this video, I'm going to be talking about plugins on the tracks. I'm going to be talking about plugins. Number two, I'm going to be talking about how exactly to use the mixing faders to get uh, how to use the mixing faders to get a decent um, overall basic mix of your song. And in the second video I'm going to be talking more about um, fine tuning that. Fine tuning um, just just as in panning, as in finding stereo space for each of your tracks. Um, things like this will help a bunch. Now, what I have in front of me here is a rock song, and you're saying, hey, Mitch, I don't know if I want to be watching this anymore because I'm trying to mix a dubstep song. I'm trying to mix a trance song. I'm trying to mix blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now that these techniques that I'm going to be using in this are universal. It's not just for rock, okay? I'm going to be giving you overall techniques um, to use. I'm not going to be going really, really, really deep into how to mix a rock song, okay? So hopefully everyone can take something away from this. All right, so plugins is the first step to mixing. Why do we use plugins? Why do we want to do this? Number one, it makes each track, each portion of the song more professional sounding, okay? And number two, it helps with the mixing stage. Okay, it helps when you go to the second step, which is editing these faders, um, making different, making th things be different volumes than each other. Okay, so I'm going to give you some general techniques to using plugins. When I first started using Logic, the hardest part I would have to say it's not recording. It wasn't even that. It was choosing what plugins to do, how do I use this, these plugins, and why do I need them, you know, th basic things like that. So first, first, thing, first things first, okay? If you have an audio track, there's going to be two main plugins that you're going to want on every single one. One of them is a channel equalizer. Actually, you're going to want a channel equalizer on every single one of your tracks, okay? Not just on audio tracks. All right. So, the second thing will be a compressor because audio tracks are going to have high parts and they're going to have low parts. You want to smooth those out. Why would you want to smooth those out? Because when you have a nice a nice track of around the same volume, you are able to use these these volume sliders more efficiently. Say um, a part of your song is going to be very loud and your your guitar is very very loud at that point and so you turn that you turn that track down just so that it sounds better in the mix but you get to a part later in the song where it's very very low and it's too low and you need to turn it up so now you're split between this having to turn it up and having to turn it down so what do I do I add a compressor it evens it out okay so on audio tracks you need an equalizer and a compressor. On software instruments, as we all know, as hopefully we all know, they are going to be either audio files or um, generated sounds. And usually these are all going to be the exact same volume unless you edit the velocity. Okay? And if you have, are not messing with velocity whatsoever, there is no need for a compressor. But if you are editing velocity, you need a compressor, okay? So, as you can see, I have software drums. So, that means I need a channel EQ on each one of these, all right? And I'm going to go over just basically how to use this channel EQ the best way possible because obviously it's a very big deal in mixing because you're going to need it on every single track, all right? So, what I suggest doing is making sure this analyzer button is selected down here. And then I'm going to solo out the snare track. And I'm going to listen to it. What this analyzer does is it shows you the frequency.
frequency spectrum and where sounds are being amplified the most, which, which, which frequency range is going to be the highest. So let's play it and see where it is. 200 is where the very big peak is. And obviously I don't want to edit that. That is going to be something, that is going to be a spot that I want to shine because that's going to be right where that snare is going to be the loudest right where it's going to sound the best but I want it a little bit more in the upper frequencies why? because I like a snap in my snare and in a rock song that is exactly what I want so I had I edited these higher frequencies um, to add a little bit more volume to that part in the frequency so as you go through each one of your tracks and add a channel equalizer you're going to want to do this for each one this takes a lot of time you want it to take a lot of time because you want these tracks to sound as professional and best as possible okay now I'm not going to explain this anymore I'm going to go on to audio tracks and as I said you need a compressor on these now with guitar yes you're going to want a compressor but even more than a guitar, you're going to want it on your vocals because vocals have extreme highs and extreme lows, even more extreme than a guitar or a bass, say, okay? And to, and I would suggest um, taking advantage of a, this limiter function inside of your compressor, okay? So I mix compressing, I, I compress it and I limited it, okay? When you do that when you, when you combine those two together, your volume is going to be very low on your track. And so you need to increase this gain up until it is of the right volume. Okay? So, just mess with your compressor. If you don't know how to use it, I would suggest going and watching another video. I'm not going to go into it anymore. Um, so, that's what I do. In singing, I also add a little bit of reverb and a little bit of delay. I don't care what kind of music you are mixing, you are going to have vocals in it. Unless you're, it's straight up electronica without vocals, which is okay, but it's always more powerful with vocals, any song is. That's my opinion. So um, I, add, I add reverb and delay combination just to make the, the empty parts a little bit more full just to make it sound more professional so, so it can flow a little bit better so I'm going to solo this track out and I'm going to let you listen to it with the equalizer, the compressor and the delay reverb combination they say that time will heal all world, but how long will it be until I forget you and if you listen closely you can hear the reverb and delay tails. They're not very big. If you add too much of that, it's going to sound unprofessional and cheesy. All right, so be very careful how much you add. All right, and after you have everything, after at the very bottom of mine, I guess there is going to be this software instrument. This is going to be tough because every single software instrument is unique okay you're going to obviously add equalizer because it's a software instrument but some software instruments have changes in volume even if you don't mess with velocity it's very weird it's very unique and so you might have to add a compressor even if you're not doing velocity and it's just this thing where you have to decide if you need it or not. And then in this one I also add a little bit of reverb, whatever you like, on top of the two bass plugins. All right. So if you're doing a straight up techno dubstep trance song, you're going to be spending a lot of time messing with these software instruments. And it's tough. It is very tough. I've mixed I've mixed techno whatever songs before and it it's it's tough for me it's tough because I am based in rock and I'm very good at doing these kind of songs so um, there you are that is going to be the first part of mixing adding plugins right? 
the second part is going to be coming down here to the mixer window and editing your the volume of each single track okay don't look at panning don't look at any of these all I want you to focus on are these volume faders down here now the best way that I have found to mix the volume faders uh, mix each track is to set them all down to maybe a negative 10 decibels every single track and then as you listen to it you you repeat it over and over again and say I need that bass drum up I need that snare drum down I need that synth up a little bit more alright so you have this you just tweak it a little bit and you want this output to be in a very decent range maybe negative 2.5 to negative 5 decibels you want that output to be low why because that that audio engineer is going to love you when you want to master it and if you've watched my mastering video it helps out a ton if you have the volume lower okay so I'm going to unsolo this and I'm going to play this whole section of the song all the way through and I want you to watch this output because it's going to be in the perfect spot it's right where I want it this is a very this is the chorus of this song I want it to be very powerful very loud that's why it's going to be in the louder part of that range that I told you okay so so it's around 2.5 um, high twos um, that's where you want a very powerful part of your song um, and what I did was I brought all these down and just edited them separately every single one the volume and this is what you get if you get into this thing where you're like I have all these volume things turned up really loud and you're like mm, I'll just turn down this output volume fader I want to make this <clears throat> I, I, want, I want to let you know that this is something you kind of want to stay away from you don't want to be editing this too much and having all the volumes lower helps you mix it honestly helps you mix I when I first started would have them all blasting and that I would have this near clipping number one it doesn't sound as good when you have the volumes lower it it gives your track a more powerful nature and that it, it's a good thing all right and it's just easier to mix when your volumes are all lower so there you are that is going to be my first section of this mixing video hopefully I didn't babble too much hopefully um, you understood it but if not please leave me a comment shoot me a message say hey Mitch you are straight up dumbass why don't you explain this better and I'll be like bro sorry dude hit me up here's the answer so, um, yeah, let me know. 